Greetings family, this is Bomani Tamba, and welcome to our Africa for the Africans Tours and Investment Conference call for 2022, 2023, and 2024, as we line up a schedule to where it expands uh, throughout a time frame of um, a year and a half uh, for several different countries. So yes, family, welcome to our conference call. Today's date is September 25th. And um, we are less than two months away from our Tanzania journey and three months away from our Ghana journey. So I definitely want to talk more about those two journeys, but also want to talk uh, more so uh, as we connect into next year and set, set things off with our Senegal and the Gambia journey. And looking forward to making sure that we just um, have a strong journey because um, unfortunately, we uh, wasn't able to do the last journey because we was, the numbers are low and it's just too many people that we had that say they wanted to go in. It was just too much delays, but nevertheless, we fixed that problem. So we're good on that. So that will be the third journey uh, and we are ready to do that journey. It's 10 of us so far and I got more people looking to join. So anyone that's uh, looking to travel with us or anyone that's out there, that's one of the journeys, the only itineraries we have with two countries. So we have five days in the Gambia and four days in Senegal. And the other journeys that we have uh, is Ghana again in May. But um, what I want to also mention, and I will do a screen sharing just to show it, and also it's on our website. I've had to swap the dates with Liberia in July 2023 with Rwanda in March of 2024 based on just the stats and the situation with the continuous rain during July in Rwanda. And that's also a reason why sometimes we don't push too far into that time frame in Ghana or any other country in West Africa to do our tours. So uh, we have had uh, associates and people we're working with provide enough evidence and documentation. You know, we're not, we're not fortune tellers and things like that, but you know, you do have to predict based things based on the last two seasons of how it rained, the rain patterns, and if it flooded and things like that. So don't want to set off a country like what we're doing and put a lot of work into it. And then it's, you know, it's a disaster. So, so far we've been successful with all the ones that we have just went out on. So I want to be smart with this one. So I do apologize to anyone who have committed based on the dates and things like that. And you know, so I've, have, I've gotten everything changed on our website. I'll get things more so changed on newsletters and any other documentation and create new flyers and postcards and things like that. But it is, um, that is uh, the schedule you see is our updated schedule and those are seven countries. And it is, you know, looking forward to taking these journeys. And the only thing I'll say to people is the only countries we don't have physical experience in as far as going is uh, Liberia and Rwanda. So we're gonna put more energy into building our staff and our connection and just like we never, went to Tanzania, but um, we couldn't go to South Africa. So I had to get on the ball and put people in place. And that became one of the most incredible journeys. And that is, you know, now we're on the third segment of that Tanzania November journey, which is the next one I would talk about. The Tanzania journey is what we're looking to leave on, but also next year we do have another journey for Tanzania. So in November, so if this one don't work out for some people or you can't just join us. We still have space. We still can make it work, but you have to be ready and prepared. But if not, then we have one for next year. So work in a rotation to where if you miss one journey, you can go on another or if you're interested in another country, you can go. So I've expanded from the base operation, what we've been doing, which is mainly uh, going to Ghana. And then at times we do Ghana, Togo and Benin. So I'm gonna show you the schedule as I just show you something more visual. And so there you go, family, our website, Africa for Africans, that I'm always encouraging anyone that's traveling with us to go to the website and go to the main menu. If you're interested in our community, I'm always telling people, I'll put that link up there first with the gold star, but that's for Black Star Repatriation Pan-African Community in Ghana. We'd love to do more things like this once we build a level of success and energy. And, you know, but also let's look into this. Let us understand that, you know, it's a, it's a tour we're doing. And you know, if you're not open to investment, that's fine because it's a full tour schedule. 
anything that we're dealing with investment talks, conversation, or sharing things, it's to build a momentum for the future so we can talk about more so just get more in, in business to where we're building a global black business pipeline. As I talk with where we're doing some of our live stream, um, and we, uh, which we push and the title we call our live streams that we do outside of the uh, tours is uh, Pan-Africanism Towards Nationhood. So it's trying to connect more of us across the globe to do more business with each other. So the Black Star Pan-African community is a shining example of that. And below on here, what I have is uh, Africa tour books. So these are digital tour books that I'll be printing out and all of the next tours that we have uh, because I'm even running low on some of the extras that I have when guests come here and also acts of presentation. Those are things we usually just give and a few different supplies. So we're going to be working more on those and then converting them, you know, and also just making a digital version of the book to where it could be sent as a PDF to the group page and you just have it on your phone ahead of time before the tour. And also you have a physical copy when we uh, meet. The newsletter is another thing too. Um, if you're not a newsletter list, you can click on this link and add yourself to the newsletter list. And once we create newsletters, which are for the, the Black Star community as far as for conference calls and all of the tours as far as presentations, uh, overview itineraries and details with our relative links like Facebook, YouTube, and so on for you to just be socially connected. So all of these things are presented to where uh, once you click on the, uh, the, the tour link, uh, you'll see the full details of the actual tour itself, including uh, itineraries, overview, visas, and, and visas preparation. So what I'm always encouraging everyone to do is make sure you click on the link, take your time and read through the schedule, read through the details. And also the other thing is to be in the group page. We'll just give updates, especially when we do conference calls. And just trying to keep people as posted as possible and keep information that's active and available to this be clear on. The only tour that I don't have a full detail as far as this um, things outside of the uh, overview is Rwanda. I'm modifying the itinerary and I'll just add other supporting documents and I'll create the newsletter where you can be able to click on it and then you have details. You know, newsletters and this nice presentation for that specific country. And it's also a shareable file to where it's posted all, all over Facebook and it's posted online in this how to just interest people based on the presentation that's in the uh, newsletter. So that's one form of the presentation, one form of this information. And so in the middle of the page on the website is, you know, you also have access to the links and access to this, whatever the price is, just to just be clear and upfront with people. And that's usually, that's a full package price of full accommodations and also flights from wherever you are. Uh, so scrolling down the middle, you're going to see our presentations, uh, up, update details on when conference calls are, and links that will also are relevant to what you'll see on the left side of the page, which is always a permanent page. And once you click on the, any of the left side of the page, you'll just literally just have access to the details in the middle of the page. So it's a simple flow of the website, uh, and the whole menu is on the uh, sideline. It's not above or, or in, also it's in the footer menu. And that's the link right here below to join the mailing list. And as I mentioned about the social pages, uh, they're gonna go to YouTube to see the video list of any of the tours that we've done. Just click on YouTube and you know you have information for Black Star there and it's just that kind of interactive website. It's, Lots of links and detail. These are all of the uh, Facebook groups that have been created. The only one I don't have one for now is Rwanda. And so those are things I'll be creating, especially since we have swapped the tour. Now I realize I don't have much time. And don't much don't have much time. And I gotta just, you know, make moves uh, quick and just get those things updated. So within by by the end of the month, I have all these things updated uh, from the website to this on the social platforms to this newsletters and so on so family we're celebrating the 16 year from 2006 to 2022 16 years of uh, africa tours and reconnecting 
hundreds of our people to um, do tours, do connection, business, investment, and so on, the sparking a trend and a connection to get more of us involved in our own affairs as a people, uh, to just get involved in doing business with each other and just keeping it that simple and then creating a connection uh, and creating opportunities for those of us who love to just connect in different parts of Africa and be this a connection to where we can connect you into options to where you can just see if this works for you or not. But beyond that, it's uh, these are roots and culture journeys, uh, which includes, uh, you know, business, nightlife, networking, shopping, and just a whole lot of the social connection to get you more you know, connected in if that's the world that you're living in and you're open into this learning more about Africa. That's what we do. So our goal is just to keep you connected. So I have you know, documentation all over the place and we'll go to the YouTube page, which is uh, interesting because it just has a lot of documentation dating back all the way from 2006 and 2007. So the main thing I want to show, and then I'll just switch and go to um, another page that we have with documentation. So this is a this is a list of all the tours and journeys that we have done from uh, last May slash June, dating all the way back. And you see the groups are big and small, and from any size, from eight of us all the way to forty three of us. And then as you scroll down, you look to the left side, you all see you know, some of our own marketing or, or people that we have in our network that you can connect and look at their information and, you know, get connected with some of the people that we are doing things with. And then some of that is my own business also. So I'm working on also a list of uh, wonderful new Africa for the Africans t-shirts for the different countries. I don't know what the colors or anything be, but... One thing about when we do these things, we get very, very creative and very, very creative in, in a way where we just work some colors together. So that's what you see in most of these group photos in all different historical parts of the world in Africa or all different historical parts in the parts of Africa that we travel to. And the trend of what you're gonna see now after, um, you know, the, the last few years is we're going back in time where all you see is a lot of wonderful Ghana jersey journeys, big uh, tours to where you know, these are serious numbers. That's not what we do, family. We organize people, we connect people, and some people live in Africa and some, but you know, these journeys of life transforming. And then you get to network with your own brothers and sisters and you're moving around the country. And we have a lot of social connections to where you know you just end up just having conversations and putting yourself in a zone that you're not you know, it's not used to. And it's just you know, life-changing to where you know, it, it has encouraged other people to connect with and do uh, business with each other. So that's what we're doing, family. We're building a global Black business pipeline, and we're connecting us to an incredible experience in Africa where we can just make a great impact. And the impact is felt all across uh, because you know, I still have people who reach out to me and just tell them how this is a blessing. But once we came there, we connected with some of them and, you know, we did business and people mentioned how their connections with other people work, you know, good stories that you want to hear more, uh, you know, you know, one you want to hear more on. And that's my goal is always to just get more recordings of these progress connection and showing people that we should do the same thing too. We should travel, connect with our own black people in different parts of the world and do business with them in this build a global empire of inter black enterprises and be unapologetic about it and just do what we need to do. So, and people like myself talk like that. Sometimes people feel a certain way, but you know, I'm, I'm a person that's straightforward and, you know, I, I know what I'm on this mission to do. And, and you know, I just tell people that, you know, if you believe in what you really believe in, put your money where your mouth is, put your life on the line and your life on it and do the work and don't watch what we're doing because what we're doing is not amateur hour. This is professional. It's not a simple thing to do. It's just a lot of whole technical and business work and keeping up with a lot of people. And also just uh, working with the people that you have in all the different, all these different countries, which is, you know, people ask me if I work miracles over the years. I tell them, no, it's not miracle working. You, you build relationships with people. You get to know people. You find out who's about the business of what you're looking to do and who understand the vision and you work with them and others, you just get rid of them. And you just put the best team together to pull what you're pulling off and you just manage it. 
Uh, but you know, so yeah, so there's some people like that didn't um, brainwash anybody or anything. We didn't pull magic, and we didn't you know it was no divine intervention or anything. That you know, all these people that you see, we connected with, and we communicated with, and we share what we're doing, and we show previous videos and documentation. We just upfront and honest. This is our itinerary. This is what we're doing. Um, let me know if you're good with it. Let me know if you're flexible, if you're open to an experience of a lifetime. And I'm just thankful for the 500 plus or more um, people that have traveled with us and have experienced these journeys. And it has set a movement and trend where you have, you know, because when you're looking at these dates, these weren't popular energies of just people like, oh, Africa, Africa, we'll go to Africa. We're doing all these things. So I always tell people are trendsetters. And, you know, we just create the culture of different things from soccer jerseys to you know, the dashikis to this mixing up the flavor of this uh, cultural clothing and this churn deep connection of the history and this adventures and excitement in Africa. And the next set of videos I have is with my son and a bunch of the children from One Africa and we're on the canopy walk to birthday parties to out there swimming and hanging out and this showing people this the, the life of this uh, us connecting our, and our children just enjoying a beautiful life in Africa whether they're there in Africa or they're come from, coming from the diaspora. And it's changing the tide of things to where when we're ready to do a getaway adventure or journey or vacation. You know, we look at Africa and say, hey, I can come and, and invest in a journey like this. And, you know, beyond just the cultural connection and the experience and the wonderful accommodations, I'm actually, you know, I can connect with people and you know, get involved in things that I never thought I'd get myself involved with. And it's just life changing. Sometimes I can't keep up with, you know, sometimes I feel like I should just come up with my own matchmaking service com company because, you know, when we throw social gatherings, you know, it's just, you know, people come and tell me, you know, this person got married and so on. I was like, you know, we have to create the perfect environment to where our own people could connect and do things together. And I've seen the dynamics of that from relationships, from also business to social connections to, you know, it's, it's opened the world up. So, and if anybody see me on YouTube and some of the videos we do, it's us defending that connection that we do. Because some people, you know, feel that we should focus more on something else. But I tell people that, you know, I'm a professional. This is not amateur hour. If you want to do what you need to do in America, I'm here working business. I have a technology and a business administration firm here. And, you know, we have you know, customers and it's good business, you know, but the future business expansion and building, being able to build your own headquarters and being able to this do things more physical in Africa to where you could be more impactful. That's the future. So, you know, what the trend of what you're seeing us doing tours is not saying that we're, I'm going to just move to Africa right now or whenever we're going to move. The trend is to connect us, especially those who are in a good situation and want to move. I've been helping people move and live and do business, business in Africa from 2007. And I have the record and I'm always having people show how we got them there. And, you know, all I did was just connect people with good people. And, um, and, you know, people feel comfortable, but, you know, so I'm here to just keep doing business as best as possible until we build our headquarters there in Jahadzi, Ghana, and then wherever else we build something and just um, reaching out to people. If you're here in Georgia, you want to come by and connect with me or for me to meet you out socially so we can talk and, you know, give you one of our presentation here, do plenty of presentations here all the time. It's a nice little social presentation area in the background. I can see other parts of uh, the uh, office, but um, that's what we do, especially just you know, with anywhere from two to you know, two to five people. And then uh, a whole lot of Zoom presentations and live presentations, always available to connect with us. So that is the end of the front page of our website and all the links, connection, phone numbers, if anybody want to reach out to me, talk to me. And this is still our feature journey, Tanzania Roots and Culture, November 17th to the 28th, 2022, our third journey to Tanzania. So what I have is a whole lot of videos on YouTube. And so family, once you click on any of those uh, website, one of those links on the social, on the website or the newsletter or anything that we have, and let me flip to the newsletter. This is newsletter that we uh, send out. And every month I send out these newsletters and try to update them as best as possible, but they're there for conference calls and just you know, the, 
the Facebook links to the, the Facebook and the website link to the tour information itself. But yes, uh, my glorious YouTube page I've been building for an incredible 15 straight years. And just showing raw and uncut footage of us all over Africa, us discussing Africa, us talking about the future of business, pan-Africanism, nation building, us organizing ourselves, us getting ourselves involved in a whole lot of things. And so the main thing I want you on the YouTube page, um, click on videos, you get all the videos. But what I've done over the years is I've created a whole lot of playlists. Um, and the playlists are ranged from this um, Africa tours and conference call um, example, as I scroll down. These are some of the, the popular um, playlists that I have. Um, uploads, just general uploads. Those, those are, these are the last few videos I've done, you know, Liberia and us talking about Pan-Africanism and trying to encourage more people to get involved with us uh, doing real Pan-African work and stop sh shuffling and buck dancing and uh, doing all kind of crazy stuff. But uh, you know that's part of our entertainment also. So I tell people when you watch us, don't take it too personal. We have a different way of kind of educating people and discussing things. So, but it's very interested. Um, you know, I'm a person that I've been, you know, even before the YouTube era, you know, you just create a whole lot of this documentation and presentations and videos and interviews and footage that you know you're creating this. This is just our new way of presenting information. Uh, very professional, organized, and animated. And just the, the graphics and the colors are a lot incredible on YouTube. But these are mainly discussions. I will also do some more of the things that we have as far as presentation in there. And what I want people to look for is my incredible The Woman King movie review. You know, it's going to shock a lot of people. And you know, as things that we always do, people are going to love it. Um, you know, because I used to like to use uh, analysis to just prove our point and prove all the things that we're always talking about. You know, I enjoy doing it as being a person I've studied over the last 20 years as far as our roots, culture, history, and, you know, and have built an operation to where we're, you know, we can tell our story and connect to people on what we're doing. And uh, this push a narrative of just Black people building Black business, building a Black connection, a Black enterprise doing nothing different from what the Chinese are doing, which is one of the model countries we always talk about um, that literally went from um, peasants to just world power. You know, within, honestly, within like eight decades, it was, you know, it's still amazing. Uh, but nevertheless, um, then, um, in this, you know, sharing certain things that we talk about, but I have uh, playlists that range from all the tours we do this right here. Once you click on it, right now it's about 160 something videos, lots of short clips, but it shows you an entire series of everything that we do. You know, I'm on, you know, from us at, you know, going to the airport, at the airport, in the country, at this site, eating here, socializing here, and, um, you know, m moving around. Then you see the real aspects of the country and real people, real connection. And school now I got some multi multiple playlists and these are this, uh, the tours that we did all last year. Twenty twenty and twenty twenty one. And then our community, Black Star Pan African community, which I have a hundred and something videos on their presentations, are showing uh, all the documentation, showing what's going on in the land show in our office, just showing people what we're doing in this Pan-African world of business connections and investment and just connecting our people and just you know, keeping people updated communicating, uh, creating opportunities for people, using the money that we make in profits and business to invest in more for our people, do business with more for our people, um, create itineraries where it's designated where it's just a black itinerary, every restaurant, business, every hotel we stay at, uh, the people we use, the people we connect with this Black enterprise to the highest level and being unapologetic about it because, you know, we have to get involved where we just have to do things with ourselves. And I just always tell people that no one is going to feel bad for you because, you know, we have immigrants coming in America, Canada, the UK, and, you know, the popular countries that built a movement to where they're going to stay on top and all they need is people to come and do everything else and they get paid and they stay on top. 
and their country is booming and progressing. It's like, you know, all three of those countries I mentioned are very progressive. Uh, so I'm telling people, instead of us complaining about the, those things, let's put our money together, let's, you know, um, and connect to Africa. Uh, you know, we do tours, and if someone not looking to travel with us and not looking to use our connections, you know, you know, organize yourself in a matter where, you know, we're expanding our world. And it's just, uh, you're trying to break the barrier of the negative mindset of any war between Africa and the diaspora and things like that. You know, I mean, people can do what they want to do online on YouTube and things like that. I laugh at it, you know, but I'm always telling people that, you know, the difference between us and them is we live that practical world and we push for us to do things together and make it work. And I'm not into where you're from as a black person. To me, that means they, that means you know that means nothing. Absolutely, honestly, and you know, because I'm on telling people that some of the people that I thought was supposed to be my Jamaican brothers and sisters have you know, stabbed me in the back so many times and set me up for failure. Is like they were the descendants of the evil, wicked people that dis that destroyed Marcus Garvey. And you know, so my goal is to connect with us who want to do this in Africa and want to this. And we're here, at, I'm here at the service. We can call me anytime, have any dialogue, reach out to me and uh, we can discuss things. And, you know, you can always get on any of the live videos we do in any of the presentation conference call. We can just talk and share information. And as you see right here, I'm showing the documentation. You see all the colors, the energy, that's all I'm pushing. That's been a dedication of my life for the last 18 to 20 years. I've never changed. I've never switched up. I've never fall, fail, or given up, you know, no matter how much black devils come and black traders have come at me. You know, I understand that's the situation. We're dealing with a systematic issue of psychological, deranged, mentally insane black people who don't understand certain things. And you know, we do understand. So we share our experience in Africa to the highest level to show how we live, we connect, and do things together. Even we have, you know, our shows with my brother, Kala Genesis, he's a person that's deep into this African history and connections and um, just showing just the connection of how two minds from two different places connect and try to just encourage us to do things together and encourage us to make experience. And then for those who are not so much into doing those things, encourage them to put your money together, invest in the streets, uh, the community that you live in, buy up empty lots, buy up blocks of building, get into, uh, you know, the business that I feel like a lot of us can get into, um, you know, here on the, in, on the level from refurbishment to reinvestment to real estate. I mean, I don't look at, I look at the world we live in as, as an unlimited amount of opportunities and you know, get in where you fit in. So those are things that you're gonna always hear me push and, I'm, and I'll die pushing what I'm pushing in because I, I live that life and I believe that life. And I believe that, you know, that the connections that we make in Africa would change the world of our children, change the future and create opportunities to where we're running enterprises and we're doing things on a level where we may not flexibly be able to build, do here, but never saying that we can't, but saying that some of us should open up their minds to this, that connection. So that's why we have these uh, journeys. I enjoyed these journeys and it transformed my life from traveling to Africa from 2004 and doing my historical Nile Valley uh, civilization documentary in 2004, which I just have right there in Egypt. And you just see young Bomani in the flesh, as you can see right here. Uh, that's it. Some people say, I uh, don't look like I have age, but I've, trust me, a family, I feel like I have age with all the knives in your back and, and all of the, this, you know, the hate and the, this, you know, this the, the bad energy that sometimes we push out on each other when, you know, when people are trying to do certain things with you and things like that. So nevertheless, you know, I'm a strong person, but um, that's what I'm always saying to people that these things are not for amateurs. Get your game up, get your weight up. Because the more you try to do, the more you try to build to where we can connect and do things together. I don't know who send these people, but they're out there. And yeah, and I love it. And I'm a person that, you know, like bring it on, bring it on. But that's my mindset. But it really hurts certain people when American like, people come in. They're like, why do people have to act like this when you're trying to do something? I was like, yo. And it's like, you know, it's part of the challenge and the roadblocks. It's part of what you have to go through to just get things done. So, you know, let it empower you and 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 encourage you because they're not talking about you and messing with you because you're doing nothing. They're doing that because they see you progress and doing something and they, they have that fear to go out there and do certain things. And so these are some other things that people told me when I was uh, back this age that don't waste your time in Africa. You have a great career. You, are, you can work your way up. You can do this. And, and do I disagree with them? Absolutely not. I don't disagree with them. Great careers. 
Now I spent, you know, I spent a good 10 years building my aircraft maintenance career and building my aviation background. Incredible. And I, just, you know, I love it. And I look forward to being one of the people that I have in our community where we're training on aviation and training on all the incredible things that you can do in that world of aviation, from the tech support to the aircraft maintenance to the flying to this, the connection to many things. It's you know, it's an incredible world of science. And that's how that's what got me involved in this information system technology, which you know, which is you know my future and you know, which is my future life from that career. But um I just always want to encourage everyone that's listening and watching that um, if you're looking to travel with us in Africa, um, understand that we're doing a group travel and you know, and I'm a person that look out for my folks. So whether you're traveling to the club with us or moving around in a bus or doing anything, we have your back. We're gonna make sure you're protected, make sure people are around and look out for you. Only thing we say is just follow the guidelines and be clear on what um, you're doing and what you're looking to do, whether you're looking to stay long or move around the country. We have this logistically organized to where we have you know, several different countries where we have people living in the country from America and people that we do business with there from that specific country. So it's something that took all this time as I speak about. So people actually, what you've been doing with your life and things like that, these are the things you've been doing, building a business outside of a career that you know, I appreciate being able to have from the US Navy to working with airlines and also in the last years doing contract work and then working my business at the same time too, which gave me great flexibility. But you know, the schedule that we have, I'm looking to do and the things we're looking to do. I just have to just do this business and, and then, you know, naturally my IT business, which I've been doing from 2005, this is something I never give up on. Is this, you know, like automatic flow of customers that just call you because they have a long-term relationship with you and they trust you, whether it's to go to the office and build up a whole office or go do technical work for them, whether a website or remote access or whether you want to come by and drop something off. So, I'd uh, love to do more of that when we build an operation there in Jahazi in Ghana and just empower a new generation of brothers and sisters to just get involved with uh, technology, all means from this aviation, you know, the automotive information system to business uh, you know, technology. You know, it's all there. Um, and encourage the future of us to just you know, get involved in running our own enterprise and just doing these things. So it's more than just Africa tourism investment. It's just trying to create a way where we can get more of us into this, living our dreams in this, a bit of future amongst our own people. And you know, it's like I have many family members of mine that's a part of the community. And I got a bunch more in Jamaica that once we build and we need uh, certain people to come and do certain work and connect with us, um, you know, they'll have those opportunities. So yes, uh, as I look back at this, just kind of look at yourself, you know, just kind of look in the mirror at yourself, like almost like 20, you know, 18 years ago, it's unbelievable. This wow. And the only journey I did before this was uh, Senegal. There was another video on that, but uh, you know, Senegal, it wasn't bad. It was, um, it was actually four hours. And I just, but I never uploaded it as this because it was just a little more, I don't know, I guess a little more personal. Uh, I was just friends of mine, coworkers, and we traveled together. And you know, I was always sneaking around trying to record them, do my little paparazzi. And from them, from them throwing pillars at me to all kinds of things. Uh, and that's, you know, one of this, why well, this guy always got a camera. I mean, it just, it built energy. So, but it was just, you know, it's fun and exciting, but this was the one that was like serious. Um, and I only learned to do this one based on going to Senegal, maybe literally like a month before. So once you click on this playlist right here, it's um, one slash 12, so it's 12 videos. And I want to say that's a three disc series that I did. Let me see, it's actually two. All right, so that looked like it. So it was a two disc, two disc uh, part, and it was um, six different uh, parts. So it's broken up. Uh, it was on. This was on a DVD, um, and what I had to do is I just had to extract the files into YouTube, but I wasn't able to just do a full video because when I did that uh, documentation, then I want to say I did have a long video file that I could upload now to YouTube, but probably can't even figure out where it's at. Uh, that was two thousand four, but it's somewhere on one of these drives or one of these computers because all the files we just, just always transfer over to the new computer. So we have a history of all the documentation videos and everything. So we're talking about 20 terabyte of documentation of videos and many things I've done across different African countries. So family, that's where the documentation is gonna be. And you know, one of my favorite is you know, Facebook. Um, and you know, I got some fit pictures that I'm going to be uploading soon. Some more pictures. You know, the one, the last one we did was uh, 
us in New York City, me and my little boy and our family. So I'm always showing those things. And all people like, why does this guy show all the stuff that they do? And it's just showing people that, yo, we're real people. And this is our family. This is our life. This is what we do. This is our vision. This is where we came from, what we're about, what we're looking to do, who we're looking to connect with, our Black folks from all over the place and do things. But this is the uh, Facebook uh, profile. And let us use it as a business profile. Tanzania, looking forward to it again. A bio of a whole career. And last set of photos uploaded. And there's a whole lot of posts. But uh, beyond that um, is the photos. That's what we deal with on Facebook. So once you have the photos, you just, these are just, what you see is going to be the latest photos I uploaded, but albums is going to give you the real deal. It's going to give you a list of just all the countries. And you know, it's kind of like you just click on a link and you just see the walkthrough of the different experience and different things we're in and the coach, the, the, the colors, and all is amazing because all you see is just all these black people from all over the place, and it's just like, yeah, I'm like, yo, fam, yes, we can get, we, you know, we can do things, we can make things happen, uh, from the business conference that I arranged, the panel of people, so all those things are just done from here, and it connects a whole world of black people together. So uh, you can always hear me push this energy of Pan Africanism towards nation, and I really feel that the energy of us making move from the lives that you know we enjoy in Africa in America and living in Africa and being pioneers and doing business and creating communities and things like that that's literally going to transform things lots of people because I look at the same thing as what you know the Asians have done they have dominated the globe after this being in you know a situation where the Asian and African countries back in the 40s and 50s were just you know had to figure out what they're going to do for the future and how they're going to organize to make their countries independent how they're going to create a better world and a better future for their children like you know countries like that i've been to like singapore and malaysia and when i went there back in my naval days in 1999 i literally saw that vision and i learned more about those countries later on because you know, you're young and like i was like 20 years old you know um so you're just excited to be someone you like you couldn't believe that how beautiful some of these countries are you know um, but nevertheless um you know I'm always some people that the only parts of the world that I've ever been that's not really developed is the African countries or the African continent, which is not you know, the worst thing or not the end of the world, but it's the reality. But also that's a real opportunity for us as Black people to do things together and create a better, you know, better future. So whether someone is coming to this tour or invest, your energy makes a difference. You know, all the people that get business, they always tell me, keep on telling your people to come, you know, we appreciate the business. And the schools and all the places we donate, you know, because they see us come there, there's no strings attached. You just encourage people, you know, them to use the supplies and donations to, you know, take care of the students and keep an energy going. So when we come back, we see progress and we just keep on showing love as best as we can. And maybe like literally just inspire other people to do the same. So the pictures that you're going to see, it's just, it just ranged from this being out there in boats and driving around the country, socializing in the daytime, the nighttime, doing cable cars, you know, across from mountains to mountain in Brazil, in South Africa, um, you know, canopy walk across countries like uh, Ghana and just actively just enjoying life. And, you know, this one, this to be our dedication to our brothers and sisters across the world uh, that let's, you know, let's, Let's spend some money with our own black people and let's go to black places and build up the energy and that's why i'm so into building energy of liberia because the tourism there is non-existent many things is non-existent they're like so people are like oh bomani how are you going to pull this off and all of a sudden that even the energy that we build in ghana it was just never there at one point the country did grow not saying that we made it grow because i wouldn't you know i wouldn't take credit for that uh you know but we're a part of the growth as far as groups of people from you know from the african diaspora that built an energy that, you know, even the year of 2019, year of return, we had two different journeys. You know, we had one in December and one in May, and it was like a total of about 60 something people, 30 something from each of our group. And, you know, you know, and it's, it's trying to let people know if we're gonna change the dynamics of certain things in Africa, we're gonna have to actually just participate. And so, just want to let everyone know that's watching that everyone do appreciate you coming into different countries. I will never take any of us to any crazy, deranged, war torn drama country. So, all countries that we have done, there's lots of field research and ground connections. And 
itineraries that's based on tourism so you can get the best of the energy in the country and things like that. I wouldn't set anybody up to put them in an environment. You know, you know I can't knock, you know, I can't knock, that's what want other people do, but what you have is luxury accommodation. The only the one country that I would say maybe non-luxury is Ghana. And that's because we have, um, you know, basic hotels, um, like one African, but it's a beach resort on the beach. It's not huts, but there's some real nice rooms on inside, but it's not a four or five star hotel or three star hotel, you know, but everything else that you have is just black owned hotels for the most part in the different countries that are at least three to four star hotels to where we make sure that you have a full accommodations and then bus with enough room to where you're comfortable and things like that. The Ghana journey, you get an extra day because uh, we're able to get better dealings on accommodation because these are group people that we have worked with for a long time. So they encourage us not to do what we've done for the other tenors and put you know, other hotels up. But I explained to them that these are newer countries. So we just start at that level now uh, where it's more relaxation. Like, you know, Tanzania, one of the incredible things that we do in Tanzania, we get on this incredible sunset cruise. And it was just beautiful just being on the top, just relaxing, kicking back, just enjoy this, you know, boat sailing around the different countries. Uh, sorry, excuse myself. Excuse me. My uh, boat cruising around the different islands, not different countries, uh, but the different islands around uh, Zanzibar Island. So in this historic journey we have here, Ethiopia, and this is an Olmec head. This is real. That's in Ethiopia, at one of their uh, museums. So one thing is, uh, I don't think any country you can look at that we've been to where we weren't in a bunch of museums. And I tell people, it's what we do. We do educational, cultural, and business uh, tours all together in one. Uh, feeding your brain, very important. Also, social nightlife and things like that are there. Uh, so it's a fun energy pack journey that um, you know you get a whole lot of and we encourage you to take pictures, videos, record, do what you need to do, um, interview people like myself, share it on your network, and we're just going to keep this energy going to another level. And so as you can see, I've been scrolling down on all these pictures. It's like so much that we did within like 2011 to 2022. And then beyond that, um, a lot of the journeys, as you can see, these are when we just didn't do much online, 2006, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's the Bomani right there, 2010. And that big boy that you see now and all of the videos running around. Um, so yes, family, so that is our social connection on there. But let me uh, get back to our site. So the only thing I can do, family, um, I've done many conference calls where we have, let's scroll up, where we have went to all of these itineraries and schedules here and things. So if anybody have any questions based on what they've read and uh, want to talk about for the different tours, uh, you know, and just you know, get ready for your you know, question and we just go through it. So the main thing is um, Tanzania and Ghana. Right now I'm helping anyone who is ready to do their visa. You can call me, text me, email me. Um, I usually send you an updated uh, visa email. Do your best to process it, be clear on it. And then once you get stuck or if you have any questions you want to talk about it, call me, communicate with me, and I'll get it done. Uh, so that's what I encourage you to do. And, um, and I do my best to help you. Uh, and if you're in different countries, uh, this, you know, we'll make it work because the visa process for Tanzania and Ghana in Canada, in the UK, in different countries are different. So what we can do is give you the support and documents uh, as far as information that you would need. And if you get stuck somewhere, if there's something else that they need, you need from that specific visa process, it don't take me long to get any of those things ever. I believe in once people need this information, I get it to them and help them with it. And, you know, and that's been the record for, you know, for the hundreds of people that we have helped with visas for all the different countries. And I have uh, you know, models and everything, but at the same time too. And then also, you know, every link that you see on here, once you click on it, uh, with the exception of South Africa and um, Senegal, you will see a visa process uh, laid out and the details to complete it. So that's what I'm talking about, family. So hopefully everybody got their visas and uh, we have a few more tickets for people who are traveling to Tanzania that we're finalizing on. And then the last of the people that's going to Ghana with us this year, we're finalizing on yours at the end of the month and um, trying to get everything done as quick as possible for all of the tours that we have and looking to close out on everything that we do in the country, at least no later than one to two months. That way we can just you know, focus on what we need to focus on, which is preparation. So, all right, family. So let me uh, stop the screen sharing and open things up so we can 
talk about the journey and I'll take my pin off. All right, so uh, greetings family. We are open for questions and answers and thank everyone for listening as we just went through this uh, quick this I have, presentation overview. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, I have one quick one. Um, I heard that there is no longer a requirement for the PCR test prior to departing and leaving. Is that true? Yes, uh, that's true and that's correct. Uh, that is true for all countries except for Ghana. Ghana, you need to either have a vaccination card or you need to have a PCR test that shows that you have a negative result within 48 hours before you board on your flight that takes you from the US or take you from, take you outside of Africa to inside of the African continent. Okay, all right then. Um... But that was really important for me, so I don't have to do all that. I'm ready to go. Absolutely. So as you can see, brother, I have all of these new countries because I am so frustrated with the foolishness that goes on sometimes in Ghana as far as just the politics. You know, you have a great country, great for tourism. Don't make it complicated by creating requirements and making your visa process completely difficult. I get more complaints about the Ghana visa and the requirements than any other country combined unbelievable and I still, still love our beloved connection in Ghana but you're trying to encourage different you know, countries and the people in the Ministry of Tourism to this you know hey we're from the DAS so we want to come and enjoy Africa learn more about Africa don't make it difficult for us why should it take me a few days to do a visa process right I should have to do these things so I'm thankful and I'm willing to say to everyone uh, that's why I encourage people to go to all these different countries that we have on the itinerary but for those who are set for going to Ghana you know I uh, help you get everything done, uh, no matter how difficult it is. And from this December journey, the only journey that we'll have in Ghana is this only May from here on out. Uh, that December journey was replaced by South Africa after this December one. And that's because of the these two requirements because it has turned off a lot of people that wanted to travel with us. And you know, it affects your business, so you have to move forward. But yeah, brother, that's the reality of it. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, definitely. Yeah, I hope you're ready and you're looking forward and you you, know, you already got your ticket, you have your seats, uh, you got the details ready for Tanzania. So yes, looking forward to taking you to another wonderful journey, just like how we did in Ghana, Senegal, the Gambia. Now this is your fourth journey with us. Yeah. Yeah. So looking yeah. forward to seeing you many more times. Looking forward to going to Rwanda now. Oh yeah, I'm going to be working on that thing now um, in the next several days. It's going to look nice. You know me. I'm gonna put, I'll put the work in the presentation and I'll be right. talking more of my connection. But yeah, that'll be perfect, man. I'll give you enough time to go to that one also. And it's a summer, so you know, it'll be a summer vacation. Good. I'm trying to get people in the school energy to jump on these summer journeys I have now. All right, man. Thanks, brother. Absolutely. All right, family, the line is open. Um, welcome to an Africa tour conference call. We're going, to, yes, we're going to all of those countries from November of this year all the way up to April of 2024. So that is a good 18 months of us traveling across several different African countries. The journey of a lifetime continues. Hello, Bamani, I have a question. This is Nicole. Um, I had a question about the, uh, the meet and greet time. Yes. I'm not showing that uh, I'm going to be able to meet or greet any of the all right, tell me, tell coming, me what your, tell me what your situation okay. is. Okay, because I'm coming from Indiana, right? So, and I go to uh, JFK in New York, and then I go to Amsterdam. But it on the, because it shows on the meet and greet, you're going to have a 10.05 flight out, number 69, 569 to Kilimanjaro. But I'm on another flight, I'm on 567. Yes, uh, there's only one flight from uh, Amsterdam, and uh, and then there's also only one flight on KLM going to Amsterdam. Okay. From Amsterdam to uh, Kilimanjaro Airport, so all of us have a proc the same exact flight. It's so I will uh, look over what you have um, to make sure there's no typos or anything. And the only thing that I would say is this: what what you see on our website schedule is probably different because. 
they do change the flight schedule. Most of these schedules are created like a year ahead of time. And we use their current schedule and they do change flight uh, numbers and things. But um, when I book all of our flights, I made sure that all of us are leaving on November 17th from the U.S. And all of us are leaving to Kilimanjaro November 18th um, from it. So so you're good. November 17th? Um, Let me uh, run it back. Uh, November 17th, we're going to leave from the U.S. And then November 18th, we're going to leave from Amsterdam to Kilimanjaro. So okay. that's, I made sure 100% of our flight routes shows that. And then we're coming back on the 27th, but some of us are staying back one day longer because uh, we had to make adjustments for that trip. Just like in Ghana, we had to make adjustments from for a few people who was open to it. So that is the um, one difference on the Tanzania journey. Okay, so we are, we're good with the, um, so regardless of what the flight numbers are saying, um, on the site website and what the ticket's saying, you're saying that everyone, once we leave from the U.S. to Amsterdam, will be, there will be one flight from Amsterdam to Kilimanjaro's uh, uh, airport, correct? Uh, yes, that's uh, correct. All of us, um, yeah, the only thing is just literally this, uh, what you see, if you compare it to what's on the itinerary, it might not match up. Um, so that's um, the only thing I need to personally also do. That's what I usually do before we even leave. I make sure all of the new flight numbers and flight stuff is updated. So that's, I'm sure that's what you're looking at. Okay, but okay. And the, the time too, because it said 10, I don't think I had the same time either. So that's fine. Oh, okay, I got you then. Thank you then, for that. And then we're gonna get to Kilimanjaro. Once we get all together, you know, we have our people there waiting for us. Um, then we take like a one hour drive back. And the other thing that I do have to change is uh, we are no longer flying on Air Tanzania from uh, Kilimanjaro to, uh, to uh, Zanzibar Island. We now can use, um, their other airline um, because they didn't have routes back then. Now their flight leave directly from Arusha. So we don't have to do that one hour drive. You get tired of doing them, them long drives all over the place. So we'll be able to just, uh, fly within Arusha directly to Zanzibar Island. And then we'll be able to leave a little later. So those are two updates um, I have to make updated on our schedule and update those as I do our new tour book, which is, let me see. Well, this is, yeah, all right. These are the, the two old tour books. I'm going to update that new schedule that I talk about and make sure okay. that we have actively the most updated stuff and then get us going. So family, Tanzania is that next journey and we're just getting it in, getting it ready. Well, we have to change our tickets too, you're saying? Is that something we're going to be altering or the tickets stay the same? When you make your adjustments to the itinerary, is that going to change our tickets once we get into, if, uh, once we get into Tanzania? airport or uh we are going to keep everything the uh um i'm trying to make sure i, I get you clearly repeat that one more time so i'll make sure i'm really honestly clear with no problem like um like what i was saying like is i know we leave Amsterdam when we and this ticket is showing that we get to um kilimanjaro but you were saying we got uh there's a change with arusha so we're not when we get into tanzania uh, we're not going to be using Kilimanjaro's airport anymore. We're gonna do. We're routine. gonna we're gonna fly from Amsterdam to Kilimanjaro on the departure. On the departure of on the um the outbound, once we physically get to Arusha, you know, after, once we physically do our tour in Arusha and we leave in Arusha, we have to go to ten. We have to go to Zanzibar Island. Mm-hmm. So. The best way for us to get to Zanzibar Island is actually leave from where we are in Arusha, which is about, you know, we're close to the airport because uh, there's also, so there's two different airports. There's one is Arusha, one is uh, Kilimanjaro. So I just want to make sure clear. So we, when we're in Arusha and we finish our tour there, we're going to leave from Arusha directly to Zanzibar Island. We're no longer going to be having to drive back to Kilimanjaro and take the Kilimanjaro to Zanzibar Island route. So those are the things I'm saying to, I'm going to be updating on our website because these are things that I just that I've just adjusted. Okay. Uh, and and okay. as I begin to finalize our schedule and update what we're going to keep and not keep, um, you know, those are the things that I'll have finalized. And then a month before we travel, what we do is we go over and then we talk about well, this was updated and re- or this was replaced. If there's any, usually it's like one or two changes, if any changes at all. Uh, but, you know, I also tell people that your 
we have, you know, these are like, I have an itinerary for South Africa. I wrote that itinerary a few months ago and that tour don't leave until like next December. So, you know, it's like things always change. So you just make the adjustment. So that's kind of what I am saying. I know it's confusing because people like you go to Kilimanjaro, then you go to Arusha, you leave from Arusha. You go to Zanzibar Island, from Zanzibar Island, you go to Dar es Salaam, and from Dar es Salaam, you fly back to Amsterdam. I was like, yeah, the routes are crazy like that. But, uh, but and, and also I tell people that these are the best routes because, uh, you know, you create like a straight path and kind of logistically move around. Same thing you do with buses and things like that. But uh, let me know if that's uh, clear, uh, Nikki. Um, and beyond that, um, you know. Yeah, because it looks like really what's going to change is the itinerary, not but not the tickets we got. Okay, thank you. Oh, exactly. Yeah, the tickets. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. And our itinerary will always be based on the tickets. So once we have printed tickets like we do now, we can like look at okay, well the schedule change and update it. So that's that's on me for that one. Thank no problem. Thank you for clarifying. Absolutely. What Absolutely. about the roommate thing? Uh, as I know she said, because we're still doing roommates. Is that something we change later? Do we ever? We we won't be able to get to change to single rooms right now, right? That's not an option, right? No, you can uh, choose to do a single upgrade now, or you can choose to do it when you get there. I would never turn anybody down. I'll figure it out, even if I got to go complain to the manager and tell them that, uh, make something up and say, hey, you're, you're, the, the way you have things set up, it, it doesn't work, man. You, you, I have people in the room that are happy with, with each other. So we need to work something out to get them a single room. And you know, oh. that's, and that's good at what we do. Is, but what we do, we figure things out and we just, we make accommodations for our folks by any means. I'm telling you, yeah, it, it'll be fun and exciting for me to tell people the amount of things that we do. <laughs> like, like you see that like, you're like, oh, this guy should be an actor. <laughs> but you know, but wow. what, what we do is how we so represent. That's huh? good to know, though. Yeah. <laughs> we, we represent our customers and we just do customer interaction and connection on a different level. I uh, just want people to have the best time in Africa. So if, so if you're like, okay, I want to stay longer, we just work that out. Or if you need help planning something out to another country, just... That's honestly just happy to see people interested in Africa because it's like a difficult thing to pull off. But, you know, it's like, you know, we have a nice game plan and, you know, you just only need to get better with time. And that's why Juma loved hanging out with us, man. Even the three countries already, you want more. <laughs> so that's why I had to create all these new schedules because people like, what you did in Ghana was nice, man. You got, you got anything else? So. But family, uh. But uh, Nikki, let me know if you have another question. And then anyone else, family, you can unmute yourself and just ask any questions or just ask me if, if any updates or anything. And also remember that uh, we do our best to post updates. And you can post questions in WhatsApp for me to post updates and answer any question. That's kind of our best you know, connection using WhatsApp. And if you want to send me a private or separate message, you can just send me a private separate message on my you know, personal. That way, you're not posting messages telling people your business. So. Let's make sure you know, see what the group page name is. All the group page name are named the name of the tour. And mine should be named my name as you save my name to your phone. Uh, so that's uh, what's happening. Always looking for any emails anybody need to email. But our family, the line is open, trying to get some more questions, especially for those who are traveling with us to Tanzania in November and Ghana in December. And then also, if anyone wants to share their visa process with getting the visa from Tanzania or Ghana, I would love for, to hear that anyone share or give any kind of advice to anyone else that still needs to do, it, do theirs. Trying to just create an interactive forum for us to communicate about the tour. And that's why we have to do all of the tours at one time as far as conference calls on this until we're doing like a month, two months out, private tour for that group. Because um, we don't have much to really talk about all the different groups. We can go to itineraries for specific countries. Uh, go ahead. My brother, this is Brother Irvin. Can you hear me? Yes, uh, Irvin. Greetings, brother. How are you? Greetings. I'm good. My question is, how far out do we need to wait before we get our shots before we travel? Should we be doing them? I would say um, if you were going to do shots, uh, I would say to do them um, uh, right away within, you know, within three to six months or two to six months. but don't recommend you doing them in the last month. Uh, I don't know what medicine or what vaccination can give you adverse effect, but I always got stories and I can just come up with a quickest story that I remember uh, one of my sisters was doing a group tour to Ghana and she decided to get the J and J and she decided to get uh, the yellow fever in like two weeks. And 
it threw her body off to where she had to just cancel her tour and she was out for about a few weeks. Oh. Uh, so that naturally can affect different people different ways. But those are some of the reasons why we say what we say. Uh, because if anything happens to you in, within like that six months, you know, you just rest, you, uh, you wash your body out and, um, and you're good to go. But um, if it happens in the time of your journey, it could just mess you up on the plane, which, you know, hopefully you know, those things don't ever happen. So that's why I, I recommend that uh, doing all these things ahead of time. Fantastic. One more question. Um, mosquitoes and bug spray and long pants and boots and netting that do we need that type of stuff or is that overkill? <laughs> it. it's, it's kind of like you're traveling with people that are never been anywhere as far as um it's out the country and then you travel with people with experience like people like myself none of that stuff i carry i just have a you know, not to say none of it because i do have an equipment bag uh, but i do carry bug spray that's much for like for my child and things like that uh, but i always recommend that like with centronella and some of those things like uh maybe some tissue and things like that you may want to carry but ultimately what you want to think about is carrying stuff in your backpack that's why we give out these Africa for Africans backpack, especially when you're on the bus, like your umbrella, or maybe a, a poncho, especially if you're in the rainy season of a country. Uh -huh. uh, but um, and the travel iron, things like that. Some of them are really good. But like, example, pep Pepto Bismol, not bringing on Pepto Bismol, but people can think about bringing anti diarrhea because you are eating food in a country where they cook the food in the water, whether they're using bottled water or something, and the water treatment is different. And it can affect how your, your normal body is like. I'm fine with everything that works here in Georgia, but you know, once I leave here, sometimes if it's a country I've been to, um, sometimes my body is, you know, is get used to it. But when it's like a fresh place you've been to, you may have those issues. So those are some of the reasons why on the um, the preparation list we put these things. Uh, so, but everyone has to kind of process and think about it. And yes, um, there are pharmacies. So if you don't bring something and you need to go to pharmacy, uh, everywhere I've traveled with, uh, there's usually a few pharmacies within a mile radius. That we can get people to uh, whether they need antibiotics or whether they need um, malaria pills or things like that. Thanks. One more question. I'm sorry to take. Oh, no, no problem, brother. Let's talk. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I'm planning on investing in the country uh, so far as buying land. I, I'm with the lead. I'm with a lot of different foundations, but I want to purchase some land and that type of thing. But will we be able to purchase gold so far as jewelry, that type of stuff? Will we be able to purchase that? And this is specifically for Senegal and the Gambia? Yes, sir. The best thing I usually work with is try to get our tour guides to do whatever research they can do for us and get us to the, a good spot to where you can just buy a gold, buy it private, and you can be clear about the laws and the rules of transferring it or bringing it with you and things like that. That way you don't get any issues with, um, you know, with customs. not declaring it and things like that. It, well, exactly. Customs, I should say. Customs. Uh, so... Uh, that's one thing I can guarantee. That's usually I work those things out. But uh, I usually have to think about the countries I'm going to because usually, you know, we bring people to more so like uh, craft or things that are created right. in the country to right. support the local merchants. But in Tanzania, um, we do take, we do, a, we do, a, a, we have a museum we go to called the Tanzanite Museum. And it's a place where somebody, wanted, instead of buying a diamond ring for their wife, they can buy a Tanzanite ring for their wife. And they, instead of having, you know, and it's kind of like their version of, you know, you know, of, of, of diamonds, their precious, oh, precious, uh, metal. precious metal. So that's one thing that you see uh, in, um, you know, I've not seen it in other countries, but Tanzania pushed their own brand. Uh, but beyond that, you know, yes, they do have a jewelry store. You can get things like that made. And then yeah. sometimes people say that you may have to compare what you can get here to there because a lot of the good stuff is usually exported. And these people <laughs> add value to it with their designs and things like that. Right. Now, the, the, the money, do we have to change our money over? Uh, yes. Uh, all countries we go to, what we do is uh, we have either a money exchange or we take it to the Forex Bureau. And then we just, you know, you just change your money every few days. And if you want to use your ATM card, you will get local currency from your ATM card. And then whatever you talk about and negotiate, it's just easier to do, do it in their local currency. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, absolutely. And I uh, do apologize for our cancellation for um, Senegal and Gambia. I did double up the energy to make sure we have more than enough people and put things in place to where, uh, regardless of the size of the group, uh, we just uh, go in um, and then, you know, no and just keep it moving. So we, hopefully we can inspire more people to come and everything. No but, uh, and then we'll be going to be finalizing on uh, tickets and a few things 
I want to say about three months before we leave. So that should be about uh, beginning of January. So Thank we're going to be giving more updates on that in the group page. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> and appreciate you sticking with us. And we're going to make it worth your while. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. All right. All right. Well, perfect, brother. So I'll uh, meet you and uh, family. The line is open. For anyone who have any questions, who want to talk about all these wonderful journeys we have coming up, who have a question for land, business, investment, there's any question that you have on your mind. All right, and once someone have a question, just uh, unmute yourself and uh, just introduce yourself, what tour you're traveling on, uh, and your questions, and um, I will uh, talk to you and why, while we're doing this, I'm just gonna do a quick screen sharing, but uh, do ask your question while we're doing this. So while I'm waiting for questions, I'm just scrolling down the newsletter um, and just uh, letting you know that this is uh, September 25th. This is our current live conference call. So what I do is just put the schedule up ahead of time. And uh, so the next two that I have is November 6th and December 11th. And that's what I'll have for this year. And then um, we just start um, you know, next year fresh, uh, which we just full speed ahead with Senegal and the Gambia. And we just come out the door with that. So that will be more in uh, mid uh, January. Uh, so that is the schedule. And you know, always have this details to connect on the uh, conference and you know, just have the link for all the previous conference calls because we always just record everything because we do understand not everybody can watch the uh, be on a live call. But in order to generate questions, that's what we encourage. Uh, but beyond that, I just try to show the documentation because there's just too much to really go over. Uh, encouraging those that's traveling us next year to put a deposit down. Uh, you can click on this um, payment options link whether on the website or on this newsletter and it'll give you a list of options and also we can email you list different options and then once we get a deposit for you just get your receipt uh, with the tour that you're committed to and put you on the um, the tour list and also on the group page and keep you posted and then as time gets closer um, we just uh, work on our tickets like three months before we travel and get more things done and then next thing you know, we're just ready to go. And it's just that simple and easy in the world that I live in. And the only link that's incorrect here is gonna be the Liberia and the Rwanda link. Uh, those links have to be swapped, which I've done that on the website. And I'll do that when I create the next set of newsletters, the next set of documentation. So this uh, Liberia now is Rwanda and this Rwanda now is Liberia. And that's the tactics that we have to do to make these things work as we work on a consistent rotating schedule and so we talk about this, all the ridiculous amount of videos that we have on Facebook, well, well, many on YouTube, and then all the photos that we have on Facebook. So it also give you those uh, same link. Uh, this, these are the things that we've talked about some more so in details as far as this, uh, the different countries. And as we do different conference calls, we, sometimes we just talk about all the things on this topic list. Sometimes we just go through them in general. And then these are the uh, social Facebook pages for all of the tours. As a family line is open, does anybody have any questions before we close in the next few minutes? Just please just unmute yourself, um, give your name, where you're calling from, what country you're traveling to, and your question. All right, so well, hopefully everybody is super, super excited and that's why everyone is quiet with the questions and then you know all of our social energy. So. Now, from 2006 here in Jonesboro, Georgia, and building a brand that we're going to expand. Uh, greetings, uh, Paris. Your mic is unmuted. We know if you have a question. Yes, I'm on the Senegal, the Gambia trip, and I wanted, I had a question about the school supplies that we should bring. How many children should we be anticipating? Like, uh, you know, what's the, uh, the a good amount of supplies that we should be thinking about? Uh, yes, uh, we're looking at uh, places that we're going to go to. It's going to be well over 50 to 100. But uh, at the same time, too, we're telling everyone just 
any little anyone can bring, uh, it'll be stretched and worked worked out. Because um, last time I remember when we went to the school in Senegal, it was a you know public school, and you know we went around different classrooms. By the time I was adding up, it was a lot of children in there, but they'll just appreciate us actually just coming and showing our presence and just you know wanting to know what's going on at the schools there and just you know taking our pictures and videos. But the more anyone can bring, the better. Um, I usually recommend that we use one of the 50 pound bags that we have for check-in and put things as far as uh, donation school supplies, things that we may want to barter with at the markets and places like that, and then put, you know, put them there. And then once you get rid of them, you have a whole lot more things that you can purchase as far as artifacts and, and things of culture to take back. But um, any basic school supplies, um, do some, I'm also more recommending light stuff like let me just look at this list that I have here. I'm going to click on the website real quick. I'm going to click on school supplies and that way I can have some of this information about school supplies documented. All right, these are just mainly schools I have in Ghana. I didn't upload some of the other ones in different countries, but the list is still good. And So hopefully you can see this list uh, good. Um, and you know, it ranged from uh, honestly things like laptop computers and projectors, but um, we just tell people just basic stuff, supplies. Like sometimes it's um, um, markers, um, calculators, uh, more so scientific uh, you know, projectors, any of the you know notebooks and things that are very uh, heavy, but um, I do bring some school supplies. I mean, some loose leaf uh, papers, but. Uh, Dry eraser marker, uh, toys for boys, um, you know, uh, black dolls, always encouraging that energy just because so much white missionaries come and just leave out their white you know, uh, dolls there and confuse the children. So we just always try to do something progressive like that. Uh, basic uh, pencils and pens, even from some of the simplest things. And I know, you know it shows like uh, school bus newer or newer. <laughs> but it even range from that, like literally people have asked me to bring them back school buses. And you know, I wish I was hitting the bank like that. And you know, I'll do all these wonderful things because I enjoy this, the energy of the children. And you know, this, it, does, it does remind me of us being in Jamaica where you just, you know, sometimes you just wish some people come somewhere and show you some love, bring some supplies. Sometimes you're not asking for much. So um, the people in the country have said it's made a difference and they appreciate it. So um, anything is appreciated. Um, and some of the things that I try to make sure that uh, we bring is, um, the deflated basketballs, pumps, um, soccer balls. Children love to play soccer ball, volleyball, and things like that. And one day we're going to be able to have the energy to ship some stuff now because, and, you know, have volunteers to like do, you know, certain programs. But um, I just really appreciate people bringing what they've brought. So appreciate you, Paris. Um, bring as much as you can. And, you have any connection to do some great stuff and sending things over. Does anybody I'm speaking about in general? Uh, we can always work on trying to find out to get things shipped over because there's only so much we can bring. I usually do like about 150 pound bag of school supplies per country. Myself, anyway. All right, so Paris, uh, let me know if that sounds good and if uh, that answers your question uh, directly or if you have it another did. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. And so, family, any information about schools? As far as the list, uh, you can click on the school supply link on the main menu of our website. All right, so family, the line is open for the last few questions before we close for the before we close for the night. And I think it's like uh, I think it's football season, so thank people, thank everyone for. And some people made us have their football on, which is all good. Uh, but uh, you know, we're, we're in the football season. But whether it's <laughs> whether it's our uh, whatever holiday or whatever, you know, we just do our documentation conference call and just let everyone know that uh, we do our best to make ourselves available and go to information and do presentations. So if you can't catch anything and can't catch a recording, you're free to call, I'm available to communicate. So family, let's look in for some last few questions before we close for the night and connect back with you. I always got questions. Oh, somebody else want to talk? Go ahead. Uh, Guy, uh, Chris Belly. Uh, Chris, your line is muted. Nobody else was trying to talk.
Uh, so go ahead and give your name. We call him from your uh, what tour you're traveling on in your question. All right, so family, anybody that's open this, uh, go ahead and uh, unmute yourself and I'll just be here on standby as I'll be closing out if I don't get any more questions or if no one has any questions. And remember, you can just always send a detailed email. But I'm going to unmute uh, Sister Akuvi. Uh, your line is unmuted. Um, let me know if anything you want to ask a question on or dialogue about, or if you just are just ready to go to Senegal and the Gambia. And, they, and if you're so committed to helping us recruit some more people so we can have a nice big bus load. All right, so family. So I have a question, Bomani. Sure, go ahead. This is me again, Nicole. Sorry. <laughs> um, I wanted to know. I I had understood that the the uh, school supplies were going to be something we would donate money, and then they would the schools would buy the supplies. Are you? Because I, what your answer sounds like, we're going to be giving them the supplies. We're going to be bringing or packing supplies for them. I didn't understand it that way, but no, that's a simple. It's a simple thing that we do. Is this? You can bring school supplies. You can bring. I do both. I just bring some school supplies and donate cash. It's you know it's, um it's and and then some people don't do either, and it's all good. You know, we just some people like it's just based on something that individuals want to do, and yeah. You know, so we can't just donate cash. I think I just donate cash. Yes, okay. you can donate cash or supplies, or you can do neither. Oh, okay. I didn't know. And also on the, I heard someone say that there was a a shot. Is a shot optional? Because I didn't see a shot requirement for Tanzania. No, there's no um, vaccination or shot requirement for any of the countries. Uh, the only thing I would say is uh, that uh, Ghana, they require you to have either a vaccination card or they require you to have, so it's maybe more specific, they require you to have a COVID-19 vaccination card or a COVID-19 PCR test dated 48 hours before your flight depart. And those are the requirements. So it's basically almost no requirements in any of the countries outside of Ghana other than a visa, or in the case of South Africa and uh, Senegal, no visa. But uh, things are back to what it used to be as best as possible. There is no mask on the plane. Um, there is the airport is somewhat normal as it used to be. So, you know, we're just encouraging people to come to these countries like, if they don't want to deal with taking you no know, COVID tests or taking you no know, vaccination, show no vaccination card in Ghana. Wow. Okay. So they, um, they are, you, is a recommendation that you get like a special shots, like for malaria or something? Is that a just recommendation? It, Anybody or, want to get any of those other things in any of those other countries? It's just up to you and your doctor. But uh, these okay. are not, I don't, I don't do recommendations for vaccination. Uh, that's because I don't want to be saying, you know, people saying, oh, we was pushing this and told us to get this now, you know, now I couldn't, you know, now, you know, I'm having nightmares or something. Right. All right. Thank you. Uh, absolutely. All right. Greetings, family. So what I've been doing is working on all of our setups and connections for uh, the last three, next three countries that we're working on. And that's what I'll be doing, working on all the countries two to three at a time and creating a spreadsheets and getting your information so we can do the accommodations and just keeping it rolling. And it's the same thing we've been doing for a long time. Only difference is instead of dealing with this Ghana, now we have several countries versus this the one to two, three, one to three country that you know we used to have, you know, for a while. So appreciate the energy of those who come in who have traveled with us and have encouraged us to do different countries and have participated in those different countries. It's you know it means a lot. So family, uh, I'm available on, and I'll be on standby, especially if anybody just want to talk with me directly and don't really want to talk on this conference call. So it is all good. Um, and what I'm going to do is upload this to YouTube and share with anyone else that uh, want to hear what we're talking about as far as our presentation of traveling to Africa as we encourage this energy. So um, line is open and um, no one has, if no one has have any questions, uh, you know, we're going to close. So I'll, I'll keep things open for another minute and wait for the questions.
Kumani, I have uh, some questions. Uh, go ahead. I have a question about the kind of clothes that I should be bringing on the synagogue trip. What is the weather going to be like? And do I need hiking boots? The weather is going to be very tropical. So um, in the daytime, you're going to wear a comfortable clothing um, that this um, you know, uh, that you um, wear around to just feel comfortable as far as like shoes, uh, things you can just walk around, whether um, uh, dress pants or you know, just wear something warm and something to wear. You know, you're not just going to feel hot. And because the weather in that time is uh, it's just it's it's not the rainy season, so it, it's more so just it's gonna be hot. It's more like um, non you not humid hot, but uh, tropical hot, where it's nice, still a little cool. So and then for if we have any uh, main, I don't, I'm trying to remember if we have anything dealing with hiking. Um, you now the only thing that we do is get on a boat in in the Gambia, but Senegal for the most part, when we climb up to the big statues, uh, you can you know. You should be able to just wear sneakers and just be in your regular move around uh, gear to where you can, you know, you can do things like that. But I think that's the hardest thing is going up to the um, the, the Trinity Monument uh, in uh, Dakar, uh, where, you know, I walked up there a few times and it's not bad, but you'd want to have comfortable shoes. And if it's, you know, you don't necessarily need, means hiking, but I would recommend that everyone kind of bring a, their flexible amount of things. You know, two to three footwear and and you know the different clothing. Especially sometimes we do business and networking and conference, so we just go out somewhere real nice for dinner. And then you know you may want to wear something more dressier and more, you know, more you know formal and things like that, or more African cultured. And then you can also buy things of that nature in the country. Great, thank you. Absolutely. It's a family. Appreciate everybody uh, joining us tonight. And um, I'll keep you posted on our WhatsApp group page and any group emails that I need to send, especially for those who are traveling with me in the next uh, few months. And um, you know, anybody who's traveling with us and you want to come by and connect, um, I'm always pushing out an invitation. It's all good. I uh, just always want to push those things out there to let people know that we are social, flexible. And we're about the business that uh, we're doing and we're serious about it to the highest level. So let's keep communicating and keep in touch. And uh, everyone take care, enjoy the night. And uh, we will reconnect on another Journey of a Lifetime conference call. Thank you. All right. Uh, Thank everyone. you. Welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Good evening. Bye-bye.